Yeah. So I will talk about uh, about uh, Jenkins, um, Carrot, and other tools we're using to do all the things with commits. So um, first of all, uh, let's start with some code or uh, spaces and uh, tabs. Later, we might get a commit, and uh, of course, we push it. Uh, earlier, I said I don't know when Garrett was introduced. I think one or two years ago. Yeah, maybe two years. So we changed that to push to Garrett. Um, so what's what's Garrett actually? Garrett is um, is for reviewing all um, for reviewing a single commit. So in difference to GitHub pull request, where you usually review a whole branch or multiple commits, this is really usually you re review every single commit and say no, I'm here. Here's missing a tab or whatever command, which in my opinion is much more precise because you just look at the commit and think, okay, this commit is fine. And on GitHub, it's more likely, yeah, all, all of this 50 commits looks good, let's merge it. Um, usually you don't find the, the missing things there. And also Garrett can integrate um, Jenkins or other tests with it. So it really depends how many tests you want to do, but uh, yeah, there are multiple integrations to it. Um, so just take a short look how how Garrett looks like. So this is the usual interface. You just see all the comments. I, I don't know how many projects we, we now start to use it actually, but yeah, it's it's a lot. It's usually sometimes a little bit uh, slow because it's full of uh, JavaScript, but yeah, that's a different discussion. Um, but it has also some SSH. Um, uh, I, yeah, some SSH, not API, interface. And you, there are also some other tools where you can interface with Garrett. Um, like there's a Git review plugin where you can, um, yeah, which helps um, downloading or uploading commits to or from Garrett. Um, um, so back to our commit. After we pushed it to Garrett, we, we do some tests. So in our, our um, at the moment, it's just the Jenkins which compiles and it do the unit test, but we might change it to maybe TT3 and C or to the Osmo GSM tester. Yeah, but we could all add it. For now, it's a simple compile and unit test. Um, then some of us must have to review the commit and say plus two, which means it yeah, looks good for me. And later, somebody have to press the merge button on Garrett because Garrett usually should own the uh, should own the master branch if you use it. Um, so Jenkins, I think everybody knows this uh, Java monster. Uh, I don't know how many plugins we are using, maybe 30 or 40, not sure. Um, let's take a just short look at our Jenkins. How, oh, this is one of them. So we have lots of uh, Test drops, some, some I actually use, some are offline by now. Um, and you also get the logs of the test drop. And for example, those are the Garrett drops. And if the drop successfully um, won for a certain Garrett commit, it also, um, you also see um, plus one for this commit for testing that it, that it worked well. And you can also, s it also links the um, the test drop directly to the commit, so you can see it actually. Um, so there are basically our four most important tests. We have also some other support drops and yeah, lots of other tests. But I think those are the basic four topics we are we are doing at the moment. Um, so Garrett and Master are not really different. They also just compile and take a look at the unit test, but we also have dependency. Like if if uh, libosmo core is changing, it triggers multiple drops, uh, and also get get back to it. Um, yeah. So I don't know how many people really try to configure a single uh, Jenkins drop and try to do it by hand. So let's. Be that we want to change the build slave. It has multiple build slaves, so every time you you have to go down, and it's really it really takes time where you 
get to the configuration. So um, we changed like a uh, couple of months. Uh, we starting using a different tool which helps us configuring the Jenkins. Um, we decided to, to use the Jenkins Drop Builder. It's uh, basically a Python script that comes from OpenStack. They started, they created it and it's doing YAML. So the input is usually YAML and the output is the XML, which is also um, pushed to the Jenkins via the API. So you can directly configure the, the uh, drops there. And also we can use heavily templating and other, yeah other um, common techniques. Um, I'm just taking a look into, into our uh, repository where we have a simple drop. Um, like this, this is a quite simple drop. It's, uh, it's just having, uh, here, this is, this is the drop, it's actually just a trigger, so for the Osmo GSM tester, if we want to, um, for the Osmo GSM tester, the Jenkins builds all the binaries and give it as the tarball to the GSM tester and the GSM tester then runs all the tests it knows. And for this task, uh, this is basically just the trigger which triggers other jobs. So for building the Osmo BSC and, and um, so, Basically, what's important is the node actually here, which is a, which builds it, and here we also have all the different different uh, triggers which it should trigger. So this is quite a simple one. Uh, we have also like uh, files which are hundreds of lines, which are um, which are doing the test. But what's a better example like? Uh, Maybe maybe the runner is a better example. So um, let's start here. So we have like an Git repository. The other one was just triggering it. This one is, is is running the 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 test on the GSM tester itself. So it's based on a Git repository. Here we have our, our Git repository, which can be included multiple times in different drops just by using the name and. Uh, yeah, I think getting further down, here's another Git repository and um, this here it actually starts starts our template. So it's really good to because we have multiple jobs which are quite similar to each other. We are using templating and yeah, it's, uh, I think it would be another talk just about the Jenkins drop builder. I just want to give you the basic idea how how it works. It's a little bit different how it templates actually, but um, yeah. Um, and we are starting to using also Ansible for our our build slaves. So we uh, have we have we had some problems that for example if you want to build Osmocom you need 10, 15 different uh, requirements like I don't know what no libdbi isn't <laughs> so much used anymore, but a lot of, of libraries we are using like libtalloc, and so we started using Ansible to set up the build uh, nodes itself, which is quite similar to Jenkins Drop Builder. It's uh, also written in YAML, and yeah, you say please install this or that package, and uh, yeah. So that's. Basically, I, I can show a short example of, of the Ansible. Um. So this is a simple test. How how we all install the um, the packages for via Ansible, and so we can you can use lists and items to define your packages, and so we have basically started to use it. So we have a fast, simple way to reproduce our build slave. Um, yeah, and it's it's basically quite simple YAML. I think most people can can actually. 
just read and understand it without knowing the language itself, but writing, yeah, of course, you, you must know, basically. So in this particular example, it's the, it's installing all the, the items listed here. It's the item here. And before we, we tell with, uh, those two lines that it should uh, update, that it should execute up get update if the cache is older than 30,600 uh, seconds. And uh, yeah, so the script is basically, yeah, for Ansible doing this for, yeah, for all of, for all of it. Like here, we are um, adding a user and also generating an SSH key and yeah. And everything resides in the Osmo CI uh, repository, both the drink and drop and the Ansible um, repository. So if you want to take a look. Okay, this fourth, basically the talk. Yeah, what I would like to be able to do is uh, uh, to test if uh, a project builds on different uh, uh, Linux distributions and run some some tests, but on particular distribution is how do you know how to do it with this these tools? Um, at the moment, we are only testing Debian, uh -huh. but we also have uh, open through the build system. And there we actually built for, okay, only Ubuntu Debian on different architectures, but um, we, we, should, we should add also the other um, build specs, so we at least we know somehow <laughs> it's, it's building or not building on this or that architecture or distribution. But at the moment we are only doing uh, Debian. But um, basically, if you wanted to do that with Ansible and Jenkins, then you would basically, um, in addition to the, right now we have Ansible files that describe which build dependencies to install using apt on a Debian machine. You would basically do the same for uh, whatever other distribution you want to build on. So you basically, in Ansible, in the YAML, you would describe, well, for, for building Osmocom on Fedora, you need to install these packages. And then we could create an, um, uh, a container or a jail or whatever um, uh, on one of our build hosts, uh, run Ansible against that. So basically this build slave uh, has all the dependencies and then we could have build jobs that uh, build on that distribution. So no, uh, you can do it with Docker. We, we're even using Docker uh, um, in, in some of our builds. Uh, it, uh, it's also possible. Um, yeah. But but the easiest way would create a build slave, and we can add it to to the Jenkins. That would be the easiest way how we could integrate it. So if you have like a VM with Fedora, we could we could add it to the Jenkins and also enable that the Garrett and the master is building on on this machine. Yeah, so the, the architecture of the build host uh, now looks like that we have, uh, of course, the physical machine, which I think always runs some Debian, but it doesn't really matter so much. And then we have LXC containers, uh, Linux containers, uh, for the individual build slaves. So we have an LXC container for uh, um, Debian 8 and one for Debian 9, and as I said, you could have one for the Fedora or SUSE or whatever you had. We used to also have some free VSD jails, uh, but uh, that we deprecated that um, because basically we're not aware of anyone using Osmocom on free VSD and uh, it created lots of, lots of uh, work for us and uh, without any users, it's not really worth uh, putting effort in it. Um, yeah, but so basically we could have such build slaves um, and then uh, as, as uh, Lynx has pointed out, uh, we could uh, execute stuff there. From from Jenkins, what we do have is that some of the some of the build jobs that we have, or the build test jobs, actually use Docker internally um, to speed up the builds um, uh, because they have already some um, basically some environment that's uh, so. I we have some build jobs that build natively in the Linux jail, and then we have some build jobs 
that basically start a Docker container and then build inside the Docker container. So then we have Docker inside LXC uh, in, in that setup. Um, and the adva one advantage of that is also that you can have any number of parallel builds in an easy way and uh, you so yeah it, it depends on on the specific build job and then we have all the ttc and 3 stuff which again also runs various different docker containers inside the lxc um, uh, to uh, run the tests yeah and the other approach is uh, to use obs but open source build service is not really for compile testing it's for building packages for the respective distribution so you could abuse that, of course, well, because if you can build your package, then yes, uh, you've done your make uh, and your packaging and your make check and whatever, so you know that has also run, but uh, that's not really what it's intended for, um, but possible. Can you explain the correlation between Git branches and the refs in, in Garrett, or if there is, or I how does that work? Um, so what? actually, Garrett has its own, it, it's, or how do I say, it? yeah, yeah Gar Garrett doesn't have, or it has some understanding of branches, but it's just, you, let's say you, you, you just put another commit on the master. So actually, Garrett, Garrett has uh, Garrett usually only tracks the master, and if you have a commit, you push it to the, to Garrett, and um, Garrett does some let's say v virtual branch for every new commit you push on it. So they do, yes, you can chain multiple commits, but Garrett doesn't have a real branch of it. Garrett uses actually. Um, in Garrett use their own reference, which is in, in every commit you see those uh, those references. Um, this I can show it on the on the Garrett. Um, the change ID here. So this is the commit message here. And uh, when you do on your local machine a git commit, um, there is a post co or pre-commit hook in your own uh, of your on your own uh, machine which generates those uh, those commit uh, those change id it's completely random and uh, garrett tracks all commits based on this change id so in a so pushing to garrett you should always use that reps for master right yes about okay so maybe so maybe it's the topic then that I am wondering about. Can you show the list of current open commits? On what project? Any of them. Okay. So there's branch. Okay, so it's a topic that's in brackets after the branch. So how does yeah. that relate to the workflow? Yeah, I think So that's not a git tag, it's just a descriptive, yeah, it's a topic. It's just, just a description about it. Um, so if, if you know how feature branches, some, peop some people use git flow with feature branches where every new feature they create a new branch. And this is a little bit similar how, how Garrett works because if you push, so if le let's say you checked out the git master a week ago you develop and now you push it to, to Garrett, usually first you rebase your branch to master and push it to Garrett. And Garrett sees, Garrett knows, okay, those commits are for master, I don't, I ignore all old commits which are already on master and just track the two new commits it didn't know before. Okay. So, okay, so just, like if I wanted to, suggest some code by making a commit but the intention is not really to say you know this is the intention is to to have this merge to master as such it's just like a way of communicating mm -hmm. maybe hey there's a bug this is here it is this is what it is this is my attempt to fix it but it's not actually me saying i suggest yeah, this okay. code gets gets merged is, is this the, the the right way to do it to push a commit 
Um, actually, there are multiple ways to do it. My preferred way is I just put a, put a not for master or not for merge in front of it if I sh want to show it to somebody, because then it also gets tested by Jenkins. But there is also a draft feature, which are non where you can put uh, your commits, which are even non-public. If somebody doesn't know the exact URL, it doesn't doesn't yeah, get to it. We're not really using any of that. So the normal process in Osmocom is you just push to a branch, not to ref sets for master. So you push to something like LaForge, BTS, whatever, FUBAR. Um, and that's not visible in Jenkins at all because Jenkins is what we use to review stuff that we want to merge, uh, sorry, in, in Garrett. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want, I mean, if it's really something that's still in process and maybe I just want to have some other people uh, to be able to check it out and have a look at it, then we really push to branches that are typically prefixed with the developer name. So you have all these Daniel slash something or Neil slash something or Lavorge slash something branches um, or P. Maya uh, branches. Uh, and um, then once uh, it's ready for being merged, then we push to refs heads for master, um, which makes it appear in Garrett and we go through review and merge it to master. How has a comment? So uh, sometimes what you can do actually uh, to be sure that it's not, let's say, it's directly merged, uh, I sometimes do it. I just mark it myself like with review minus one, just to and I add some comment to the to the comment. So then um, it's more difficult actually for somebody to merge it because I mean when you see the minus one, uh, then it's uh, I mean you take more attention at it at least because yeah sometimes you want to propose something but. Uh, you are really not sure if that's the correct fix, so you are just really, okay, that's my proposal, but can somebody really check it out? So uh, uh, that's what I do usually. I, I add minus one, uh, like myself, to my commit, yeah. and then I, I put some comment, and then maybe I ask on IRC, can somebody check it? Yeah, uh, that's, yeah that's right. my preferred so way. So with minus one is meant on Garrett, you say plus two, so it's like a vote system where you can vote on, on the commits and this is like an example where, where I developed something but without a test and I gave it minus one so others might just see okay, it's not for real yet or there are still problems. Yeah, like sometimes uh, if, if you push something but then you realize also like, oh, actually this is missing uh, uh, some code or actually I'm, I want to add some tests or whatever, then myself I add a minus one, like, hey, keep it there because I am actually going to update it at some point. Maybe it takes a few days, but. So my experience with with Garrett in another project is that it's um, if you push something to Garrett, it usually doesn't leave Garrett and go into master unless you you sort of take care of that happening. Um, so just just it being in Garrett is is not automatically, in my experience, um, a, some a, a guarantee that it will will arrive in master. But it I think I think if I understood the question the right way, I think it makes sense to push also proposals into Garrett. No, because you can better discuss it, but it depends if you want to discuss it in Garrett or on the mailing list. I think that's, that's, that's the difference between both. So if you just push it to a branch, you can't discuss it in there. You have to discuss it on IRC, on the mailing list. But if you push it to Garrett, you can discuss this directly there and and can also annotate single lines in my opinion, much better than on a mailing list. I think it's also good to, um, because this way you can keep a record of uh, like possible changes because some maybe so at some point uh, after a few time, you figure out, oh, actually this patch is really needed and I made it, but of course if you push it to a branch, sometimes uh, you just delete it at some point. Uh, but in this case, you can probably go and, f and figure out where it is in Garrett and actually reuse it. Mm. Okay, any other questions? Yes, I don't know if it was uh, said. Uh, if you push some uh, commits into a branch and not trying to push it into master, it will be tested by Jenkins or not? No, it won't no. be tested by Jenkins. Okay. Jenkins is only testing master and Garrett patch has set. So, uh, yeah. Such a commit you push to Garrett. Okay. 
That could be changed, though. I mean, it's just a configuration. I mean, we if, if there is a need for it, we could uh, ask um, uh, Jenkins by configuration to not only build uh, or test uh, master, but also some other branches with a certain prefix or something like that. So if that's needed, it can be configured. So what I personally would want to see is that we have, uh, even for the non um, non Garrett projects, we have uh, build testing in place that actually passes. Um, uh, um, so even for projects like RTL, SDR, and so on, I, I think it's really useful to have um, uh, uh, testing in place because the Jenkins execution, I mean, uh, normally uh, there's a clean environment, it's being built and you run make check or something like that to run some unit tests. Um, not sure whether we build with address sanitizer now and W error, I think we do. Um, so um, there is advantage of, of stuff being built and knowing that uh, your master is currently building on, on at least uh, those uh, systems that we uh, primarily support, which is Debian uh, so far. Um, and I'd like to um, encourage people to work on, on adding this even for the non-Garrett projects and the non-CNI projects, so to speak. <laughs> 